so YouTube this will be my first YouTube video um, welcome to the geeky fighter MMA today I'm gonna be talking about the UFC 228 Darren Toe versus Tyron Woodley ah this one today we're gonna do picks I honestly see, um, I don't know, this one's gonna be a tough one. It'll be, I think it'll be a little similar to Woodley versus Thompson. Hopefully, it'll be like the first one. The second one's boring shit, but I don't know. I don't really, I think Willie's a good fighter, but I don't really like his style. Seems like he's too afraid to get tired and like, bro, you're a fighter. It shouldn't matter how great shape you are. If you're gonna fight, you should be tired. But I can see why he does that and good for him. He's a smart fighter. He's gotta win, even if it's boring. I really like Darren Tell, but I felt like he's been kind of baby in a way by the UFC. There, he's avoided wrestler, but now we finally get to see him fight a real wrestler, and boy, I think that should be interesting. But Tyron really hasn't really been using his wrestling offensively lately in his past few fights. This one's gonna be interesting. You got the explosive striker who can knock you out any second versus the big ass gorilla who's has an interesting multi style. It's like multi karate Connor's like a multi uh, Connor's like a karate boxer Darren Tell is like the karate multi at least that's how I see it that wide karate stance but like Tell's more Thai base good elbows good kicks although with that wide stance I know it's in the Thompson fight. I thought he'd be throwing more kicks since his multi background, but he was only able to do that when Thompson was, I believe, softball. Because they're both softball, so yeah. But I don't know if that, I don't think that would be a big factor. I think Woodley will just. If he throw leg kicks, he could be taken down. It'd be interesting. I think he's gonna be throwing more teeps. Maybe that John Jones side kick to the leg. But anyways, I don't really know what I'm picking. I just gotta go tell. I want tell to win. Willie, I don't like his conserve style. And I think if you could, I think if you are good, if you could break him, you know, he could be broken. Although you gotta be really good to get it there, you know. It's gotta be, but we don't know. Tell's a big ass dude dropping that amount of weight. He might be slower later on the fight. Who knows, maybe he might even gas out because all that weight cut, but. If I had to pick Tell winning, I see Tell being Willie in the later rounds. Now, moving on to the other one Nico Montana versus Valentina Shashenko. Yeah. Just anything can happen, but 
unless Valentin or Shishenko comes in there with all her joints torn apart. I don't think Nika Matano stands a chance, so does everybody else. I don't know what the betting odds are, but it's like gas apart. Now to my most the one I'm most looking forward to Sabit Negava Sherpov. I'm calling right now. I'm riding on his hype train. Biggest Sabit dick rider right now. Dude is gonna I'm calling right now. I buy into all the hype. He can beat. Max Holloway, same right now. I mean, it's still got to see more from him, but until I get proven wrong, we'll see. I mean, the last fight, he was doing pretty well, but there's just some small things he need to fix up. I would personally would like to see less spending Fashy stuff. I think he only gassed out in his last fight because he threw so much. Like maybe reduce that to one or two times around when you get through those stuff because that takes a lot of energy. It's explosive movements. They take a lot of energy. If he just did more basic like fundamentals and like use his footwork set things off his hands, maybe throw some leg kicks, body kicks, teeth, more of those instead of like the spinning shit. I feel like he wanted to gas out his last fight and he, he might even finish more of his opponents because I think he has the finishing potential, it's just those flashy stuff, yeah. They land, they'll knock anybody's ass up, but I think if he did more like the just basic boxing punches, maybe some elbows, knees, kicks, basic, you know, roundhouse kick to the leg, body, and teeps, I think dual like get more knockouts because they're higher chance of landing but anyways yeah he was a, originally supposed to be fighting Yara Rodriguez who's similar in the stand up but from what I've seen Zabit is better and I like Zabit has better understanding of footwork from what I've seen like he would throw his shit and reset and he's always in perfect stance most of the time you rarely see him after a spinning attack he's rarely like off balance or off stance he switches back to stance very and resets pretty well and he circles away it's very hard to corner him up against the cage and yeah I honestly think Yara he gets had no intentions of fighting and this is a fuck you to the UFC congrats on him for doing that <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny but I was like at this point if uh, Sabit beats Davis which he most likely will I think he should move on from Yarigas and say no screw the guy you know do wants a two in a fight I mean I can see why but like this is a fucking UFC man. Tuna fights are, you don't really get much of that. You get guys in, around your ranks as your next fight, win or lose. Most of the time, but. Yeah, there they ain't no fucking tuna fights in there, man. Even the tuna fights are risky as fuck. And yeah, Nugamash no Sherpov. I don't even know the other dude's name to 
be honest. I think something Davis. But I haven't heard. I don't think I've seen his fights. Maybe I have. But I just don't remember. Like a lot of these guys in UFC because there's so much of them now. Like Nico Price, I don't know who he is, but when I hear the name, I, I was like, oh shit. Do it later on the card. It's like, oh shit, I know that name. I don't know how he looks like. I uh, just had here is oh that knockout over Randy Bowser like, oh that fight yeah yes he has so much guys all I just remember is that fight like I don't even know dude be Rafa I know Rafa but the dude like choked out or drop Rafa I don't even know so much guys in the UFC I just know certain guys and then I just know like the, the other fighters based on. The ass whooping they give the guy. I just don't even know the name, how they look. I just remember the fight. Anyways, sorry to go off on that random side thing, but yeah, Brandon Davis. Yeah, 9 4 versus the B, 15 1. Brandon Davis obviously looking to make a giant upset, but. Man, poor Sabit, man. Nobody in the top 10 wants to fight this dude. Like, yeah, nobody. Dude got, I'm calling him, man, this dude. He just needs to rush. I don't know, maybe give him auto. I mean, that's a big step from 15, but like, to number three, but I don't know. Let's see the, 145 rankings UFC UFC 145 ranking Got Max, Otto, Frankie, Cub Oh this one's not updated Cub still at 4 I believe It's like hell no he ain't Oh yeah Renata Vicano That'd be a good fight with the beat Two prospects. I know Jeremy Steven just got knocked out. Uh, by Otto. Otto's not gonna take that fight. Frankie, their teammates, and yeah, I'm pretty sure Frankie knows. He Zabi ain't gonna. Zabi's just too big for Frankie, and Stu's fast as fuck too. Cardo Llamas, maybe given that, but I like to see him against uh, Ren oh, shit, dude's name, Renato or whatever. Dude just be a cub. Dude who's beating up Brian Ortega then got submitted. Just like everybody who fights Brian Ortega. <laughs> beat man everybody's talking that dude he's gotta be my favorite I don't know I'm riding his hype train all the way until I see until I get proven wrong but I don't think dude has cardio issues the thing he does just takes a lot of energy like Connor when he's throwing all that spinning shit against Nate and then the second fight he threw less and he is able to last a little longer but he still has cardio problems, but I don't think that's the case with Zabi. Anyways, time to move on. Uh, Jessica Andra versus versus Carolina Kovalkiewicz. I don't know. Jessica Andraj, 18-6, 12-2. Jessica, she's not like the most technically sound, but she's like a just a physical freak. Tough fight for anybody. Has an iron, who takes take punches all day. She's like a fucking tank, a strong ass tank. Like a 
imagine if you had those uh, power lifters, a strong man who knew how to fight. <laughs> she's like that. She has that fucking. She's born with that strength. She's like a fucking John Lineker. She's just had that insane amount of natural strength, hard bones. You could hit her a baseball bat and she won't even feel it, man. She. But, you know. I don't know. Fighting Carolina. Carolina. I don't know. I don't think she could out finesse Jessica. She might win rounds one. But like rounds two and three, I think Jessica's gonna like keep pushing the pressure. And I don't know about finish, but she's probably gonna get on top and smash Carolina's face. Like, talk game about pound for pound punching power wise, who can hit the bag the hardest? I might say uh, Jessica Andraj in the division, but she lacks the skill, but man, she's just a physical freak with a lot of pressure, and she's hard to put away. Like, I, I got Jessica Andraj. I don't think Carolina could often this. And this will probably be a title eliminator. And on to uh, Abdul Razak Al uh, Hassan versus Nico Price. If I remember correctly, I think Abdul lost to uh, Dan Hooker. If that's the guy, let me check. I might be wrong. No, he lost to, I think, Amari Akumedov. Okay, I'm wrong. That's not the guy. He lost Dan Hooker, but um, yeah, I haven't really seen any of these guys' fights. I seen the Nico Price highlight of that dude knocked out Randy Brown from the bottom. That's um, yeah, I can't really go much. Off these guys, um, I am excited to see Nico Price though. After that highlight, I might go watch some of his uh, old fights, see how they are. But yeah, these two are potential prospects. Like Nico Price is just above that R Randy Brown, so like. He's a potential prospect. I don't really consider Randy Brown a big prospect. He beat who was uh, Nikki Gall, and I don't consider do a prospect. If you watch uh, Eugene S. Robinson's show on MMA Nation, do calls him. Uh, he has a, something called a. A cynical opportunist or whatever, a cynic, something like that. Basically, Nikki Gall is just taking opportunities. That's why I believe Mickey Gall is. Sorry about Tandron or whatever. It has nothing to do with the event, but. Yeah, that's the main car, and. 
what else is there? Ooh. Asparza versus Tantiana Servas. I don't know this one, but Asparza is like a gatekeeper, so I might go with Sarvas. Sterling versus Cody Stangman. This one is an interesting one. Both prospects. Aljo. Dudes. I like the dudes of. He has that fighter's mentality. Like. Actually getting knocked the fuck out by a. Uh, shit dude's name. Yeah. But yeah. Actually getting hit by that kick. That kick probably would have knocked out anybody in the division. And dude just came back and yeah, took on prospects. They're just feeding, well, I would say feeding, but they're just giving out to all the prospects right now. Uh, Cody Simon heard a lot of hype around the dude. Haven't seen much of his fights, but I'm definitely. Definitely uh, interested. Uh, I'm probably gonna go with. I probably gotta take the hype. <laughs> go with Cody Stamen. Jimmy Rivera versus John Donson. Uh, boy. Oof, I got. I know those two losses were not. I know if Jimmy got KO on the Ultimate Fighter or not. I think he. I might be wrong, but I think he got finished. But um, man, just Marlon Moraes, that's the dude's name. Just got dropped by a, just got KO'd by another kick that would probably would drop any fighter in the division. And he's fighting John Dodson who's arguably one of the hardest punchers. But Ever since he went to Winkle John, Winkle John, they had that, I don't know, stay on the outside, and I don't know, ever since he went there, I felt like he has less knockouts, or he's been having less recently, but like fighting John Lineker, ain't nobody knocking that dude out. But when you go into um, the Winkle John, I think they all, he trains all guys the same. He trains them up, stick and move. And yeah, I don't really see like, I don't know, there is a lot of backpedaling, a lot of outside fighting from Winkle John. And uh, yeah, I think uh, that style kind of like, I don't want to say diminished power, but that style definitely uh, has less chances of getting KOs, but at the same time, you got less chance of getting knocked out too. So, now this one's interesting. Jimmy Vieira was up there for a while, but I don't know. John Donson is like that gatekeeper who's like so fast and so powerful that you know even though he's gatekeeper he can still finish anybody just due to that physical thing he has but I don't know Jimmy Vera I can go with John Dawson Jimmy Vera like the fight I saw the one of the fight that made him stood out to me or made me notice him was against the favorite fight and Faber ain't no striker man Jimmy Vieira yeah like good low kicks good takedown defense but he's fighting another fast guy who like barely lost to uh Morales who lost due to getting hit in the grind and I think maybe an eye poke like 
I, I'm not saying Mariah's come to beat him about those dirty tricks, but yeah, I'm going with John Donson. I think he's got to win by KO. And yeah, that's like all the guys. I know Diego's gonna. Yeah, Diego's done. He shouldn't be in the UFC. Just cut the do for his own safety, man. Jim Miller, like, what's he gonna get if he beats Alex White? He ain't gonna get. He's going nowhere. It's just gatekeeper. Dude, those guys, man, just cut, get them out of the UFC for their own safety. And the rest, I don't know. So, that'd be it. Yeah, my first video went a little bit longer than I thought it would, and. Whew. Yep, you're watching the Geeky Fighter MMA.